young and fair, went to the city hall to pay her taxes. Where she espied Felipe, the newly hired clerk. Head over heels, she fell in love, desire, and lust. She came again, and paid again, till there was no more tax to pay. But he did not raise his eyes from the figures in his books. Did not see her figure in the flesh. Well, finally, she went to see the mayor. Sir, she said, I have to put before you a complaint. Here is this clerk of yours, pacing up and down the street in front of my house, staring at me when I go out. Tis not the custom in this town. I wish you'd make him stop this thing at once. The clerk, Upbraided by his boss, protested loudly. 
But he was far from catching on. There was Ginevra, back again. Your Honor, I do not know what he said to you, but he certainly has not let up at all. Look what he has sent me here. A ring of gold, it seems, but precious or not, I do not need his trinkets. My honor is at stake. Please, return the junk to him. The mayor, conscious of the high moral standards of his town, bawled Felipe out and made him swear to stop. Felipe swore with clear conscience, since he had not done a thing. But he began to ponder. Is she perhaps in love with me? Ginevra waited, 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 thinking he surely seems to be slow-witted, but perhaps he will be quick on the draw. As nothing happened, here she came again for the third time, weeping, weeping, your honor. Now this really went too far. Last night, as I was undressing and stood naked by my bed, there was this man staring at me through the window. He must have found the sneaky path by the river, jumped my fence where it is low, and climbed the pear tree by my house. Shame and disgrace. The mayor banged the table furiously, thinking perhaps how he would have enjoyed the sight from the pear tree, were he not so fat and old, and yelled, I'll make an end to this, to be sure. In he called Felipe, shouting, Have you gone out of your mind, you lecherous clown? in our God-fearing city. Sneaking up the path by the river, jumping the fence where it is low, crawling up a pear tree, staring at a naked lady. <laughs> One more such thing and you're fired. Fired! Fired! Felipe, crushed and humbled, flushed and mumbled, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I repent. There won't be any more complaint. But conscientious clerk that he was, he carefully made mental notes. Indeed, there was no more complaint, and the mayor was as happy with Felipe as was Ginevra, though in a slightly different way.
house at that time that Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua and he took her and went in unto her and she conceived and bare a son and he called his name Er and she conceived again and bare a son and called his name Onan and Judah took a wife for Er whose name was Tamar and Er was wicked in the sight of the Lord and the Lord slew him and Judah said to Onan go in unto thy brother's wife and raise up seed to thy brother and Onan knew that the seed should not be his and when he went in unto his brother's wife he spilled it on the ground and the thing which he did displeased the Lord wherefore he slew him also Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, Shua, Judah's wife, died. And he was comforted and went up to Timnath, he with his friend the Adalamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath. And she put her widow's garments from her, and covered her with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place which is by the way to Timnath. And when Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot. And he turned unto her and said, Go to, I pray thee. Let me come in unto thee. And she said, What wilt thou give me, that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me pledge till thou send it? Thy signet, and thy bracelets, and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her, came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on her widow's garments. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend the Adalamite, but he found her not. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And it came to pass after three months that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are am I with child. And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and bracelets and staff? And Judah acknowledged them and said, She hath been more righteous than I. And he knew her again no more.
Pasiphae, the queen, got very hot. When she espied the giant sacred bull, who stood there solid as a rock. She said to clever Daedalus, Build me a wooden cow. He made a splendid wooden cow. He guessed the queenly plot, a masterpiece by Daedalus, designed to fool the holy bull to bring the queen desired shock. Examining that lovely crack, what do I care what's in this cow? exclaimed the fiery bull. And hesitated not. His charge was fast and furious. Her posture was ridiculous, but love endures the hardest knock. She cried with joy. He hits the spot. I truly am a blessed cow. What cap will come from such a bull? A monster came when her time was full. The king was not. A labyrinth was ordered now to keep the horror under lock. At sunrise, Daedalus was shot. goes to the Smithsonian.